What's good ladies and gentlemen, it's time to do the final part of the A to Z of my DVD collection. Um, it's taken longer than I thought it would, um, about six months now, um, but even then it's not over. Um, I've still been buying DVDs obviously since I've been going on with uh, this whole thing. So I've got at least another three videos worth of DVDs to talk about that I haven't shown before, and some Blu-rays as well. Um, but I mean, this is the end of the kind of um, run of videos that I've done over the last six months or so. Um, but as I say, it'll go on. What I'm hoping will happen is I'll show, I'll do those three episodes. Um, I might even make it four by the time um, it's rolled round um, and then what I'll hopefully do is every time I've bought you know 25 new DVDs to show you I'll do a new video or something like that depending on you know how many I'm buying obviously um, and hopefully that will kind of remain manageable um, as a thing I can do every few weeks um, but yeah, uh, I mean, let's get into it. That's a, a matter for another time. Oh, um, before we carry on, I'll just plug the podcast as well. Link in the description. Uh, if you watched the last video, you'll know we've just done an episode about horror movies. So that's there for you to check out. But um, let's get on with the rundown. And uh, first up, Vertigo by Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, yeah, with uh, Jimmy Stewart. Pretty damn sweet movie. Um, about a guy who uh, suffers with vertigo and has to look after uh, a friend's um, suicidal wife, um, which obviously leads to um, some interesting interactions uh, in which he basically uh, kind of has to, you know, follow her up bell towers and stuff. I mean, I won't go on too long about this movie. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's Hitchcock. Um, Hitchcock really put foot wrong. This is a damn good movie. Um, I would highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, no, this movie, you know, this DVD's got some uh, theatrical trailers and all of that kind of thing on it. But yeah, no, Vertigo. One of Hitchcock's best, for sure. Um, I'd probably still say Psycho is my favourite, but this would go in sort of second, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, much as I like um, North by Northwest and um, all of that sort of thing, this is a great movie. So yeah, that's Vertigo. Next up... This is a bootleg of violent shit. The Andreas Schnass movie. It's just on a DVD-R. Um, and this actually comes in a PS2 case. Um, you remember back in the day with PS2 games, you got a um, uh, a little thing to hold your memory card in. So that's funny. This is just something a friend made for me. Um, but yeah, violent shit. If you've never seen this, this is like the kind of logical conclusion of the kind of shot on video boom of the late 80s and early 90s um, this is like the lowest budget movie you can imagine it's got a budget of like two thousand dollars or something roughly uh, it was worked out at and it's yeah super cheap looks like it was filmed on like a, a home video camera um, camcorder um, the special effects are terrible um, the whole the whole movie is terrible, basically, but it's a very interesting movie and kind of hypnotic in a way. Um, but yeah, that's that's violent shit. I mean, I, <laughs> it's a it's a very interesting movie in its own way, I guess. Um, would I recommend it? Mm -hmm, check it out. It's 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 not good, but it's certainly interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's violent shit. Like I say, just a bootleg. Um, Next up, this is Violent Shit 3, Infantry of Doom. Um, I don't have Violent Shit 2, and that's why I've not watched this movie. Um, again, this is a bootleg. Um, so yeah, I can't comment on Infantry of Doom. Um, 
I will check out Violent Shit 2 because apparently that's the be- the best movie in the series, um, pe- according to people. But, I mean, Violent Shit 3, yeah, uh, it's given to me by the same friend who didn't have Violent Shit 2 at the time. But uh, we'll move on quickly. Okay, Walk the Line. Um, this is a great movie uh, starring Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, if you're a Johnny Cash fan, this is essential stuff. Um, it's a biopic that charts his early childhood, um, the beginnings of his career, and most sort of specifically, it focuses on his troubled relationship with June Carter, who eventually he would marry. Um, after many years in love with her. Um, yeah, it's a terrific film. In terms of like rock biopics, this has got to be the, the gold standard, you know? Um, but yeah, no, uh, Walk the Line's great stuff, great performances. Um, if you love Johnny Cash's music, then this is pretty great. They did a great job of emulating not just Johnny Cash, but everyone, you know, there's Elvis stuff on the soundtrack and um, June Carter stuff and uh, there's a yeah Jerry Lee Lewis, um, but yeah no it's you know they did a great job um, putting this movie together. Definitely, like I say, for my money that is the the peak of the the rock biopic. Next up, War of the Dead. Um, now I didn't have much faith in this when I saw it in the uh, CEX um, because it's a fifteen. Um, you know I know that you shouldn't be you know biased in that way now. Um, what with the way the BBFC is changing, but I just thought, you know, I tend to like my uh, uh, zombie movies to be 18s. Um, this is, as you probably guess, a Nazi zombie movie, and it's a pretty decent one, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, about a, um, a group of soldiers making their way through... Um, where are they? It might be... Fr- I think it's... Russia or somewhere like that, but they're making their way to destroy a Nazi bunker and they uncover an experiment um, Which is always the way in these Nazi zombie films um, But yeah, no, it's um, you, you know in this one they sort of uncover a Nazi experiment for reanimating the dead um, and sort of have to just shoot their way through hordes of zombies Um but yeah, no, this was actually a pretty cool movie. I enjoyed this one a fair bit. Um, so yeah, if you see War of the Dead for cheap, pick it up. It's no, it's it's no classic, but I mean, it's uh, it's certainly uh, quite an enjoyable movie. Next up, the Warriors. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, you need to sort it out, dude. Um, the Warriors is about a gang called the Warriors, who uh, are from Coney Island, and they head over to, uh, what park is it? Um, doesn't say, but, so, but they, they head to a park in the, on the other side of New York for a meeting of New York gangs, and um, they uh, get accused of a murder, and all of the gangs of New York are on the hunt for them as they try to make their way back to Coney Island. Um, yeah, great movie. Um, really fantastic. Great low budget movie. Um, if you're into your crime movies, this is something a little bit different. Um, kind of, you know, street gangs and stuff rather than the, uh, you know, the mob movies and whatever. The Warriors is an, is an incredibly cool movie, so check that out if you, uh, that sounds like your thing and you haven't seen it already, which you should have. Um, because it is a, a classic. Next up, White Zombie. Uh, one of the first zombie movies. Um, you can find this very cheap now. Um, I think this is actually the first movie that sort of explicitly refers to zombies. You can pick this up really cheap because it's a, a public domain film. I mean, these are uh, Cayman Classic Horror Collection. I've got a couple of other ones, um, I think, and they're public domain films as well. Um, but White Zombie is a pretty rad movie, actually. It's not a zombie movie the way that it would become with, like, Night of the Living Dead or whatever, but... Um, I mean, it's, it stars Bela Lugosi as this kind of voodoo um, uh, witch doctor guy. 
um, who um, takes control of the mind of a, a, a woman who is, you know, the white zombie. Um, and, you know, they use it to carry out um, his orders and his uh, works of evil or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good good movie, White Zombie. Um, interesting to see the origins of the concept of the zombie, definitely. Um, so if you're interested in that and you haven't seen White Zombie before, like I say, it's public domain, so it's probably on YouTube somewhere. Um, but yeah, that's White Zombie. Next up, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Um, yeah, Bob Hoskins is one of my favourite actors, and this is one of the first movies I would have seen him in, I think. Um, almost definitely, actually. It was either this or the uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. I couldn't, I can't, I couldn't tell you. But yeah, no, this is definitely a lot better than the Super Mario Brothers movie. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Um, Bob Hoskins. Basically, in this world, um, cartoons are real. They live alongside humans. Um, Bob Hoskins plays uh, a detective who is um, kind of working on the case. Um, of a murder that Roger Rabbit has been accused of. Um, it's a really fun movie, a really cool comedy movie. Um, I would definitely say go and check this out. Um, yeah, like I say, very entertaining stuff. A good comedy. One for all the family, that. Next up, The Wicker Man. Um, talking of our uh, horror uh, top 10 horror movies episode this features on a, a list uh, this is a really cool movie um, obviously uh, Christopher Lee um, Edward Woodward and uh, Britt Eklund um, a little Scottish island um, where they practice pagan religion um, or a sort of you know a neo-pagan religion rather um, they uh, their crops have failed and they're trying to offer a sacrifice to um, make them not fail this time. Um, and yeah, no, the guy in the middle kind of gets caught up in it all. He's there investigating the disappearance of a young girl. Um, like I say, very good stuff, uh, this movie. It's certainly a classic of the genre. Um, yeah, cool movie. We'll move on. Oh, another bootleg here, Woman Behind Bars. Uh, I only got this because it's on the Video Nasties list. It's directed by Jess Franco, um, and he kind of sucks as a director. But as his movies go, this one's actually watchable and kind of entertaining in places. Um, essentially, um, Lena Ramey plays a chick who um, gets sent to prison for uh, murder. Um, she pleads it as a, a crime of passion, but... Um, the you know the authorities believe she was actually um, involved in some sort of diamond heist. The guy she killed was a, a diamond smuggler, and they think she knows where the diamonds are and all of that sort of thing. So it's sort of a bit of a mystery in that sense. Um, although that's obviously not the intention. The main intention of the film, obviously, is to see tits and bush and lesbianism and stuff. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's as far as Jess Franco goes, it's it's a pretty uh, interesting movie by his low standards. Um, this is, a, as I say, this is a bootleg. I was told it was a Betamax transfer, um, but to be honest, I mean, it looks far too good to be a Betamax transfer as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it's in widescreen as well, which obviously uh, I don't think a Betamax would be. Um, I mean, admittedly, I've never actually watched a Betamax. Um, but yeah, no, it's... Uh, that's Women Behind Bars, just a really cheap little bootleg that I got of it. Um, I am planning eventually to get the, the, the legit release, because obviously I collect the video nasties, um, and uh, this is one of them. Um, and I want to have, you know, proper release. Obviously there's a few, you know, Delirium, Human Experiments, um, and uh, there's definitely one more. Um, that, that you know you can only get on bootleg. I think it might be the original Revenge of the Boogeyman, um, but but yeah, no, they, they, these are all movies that you can't get. But I want to get all the legit ones um, on proper formats if I can. Next up, 
Wrong Turn. This is kind of a goofy movie. Um, Wrong Turn is kind of playing on the whole mutant cannibal angle um, that was uh, made popular by The Hills Have Eyes. Um, it's a pretty fun movie. A dude and some uh, some kids that he uh, has he gets involved in a car crash with end up trapped out in the sticks and uh, have to survive an attack from these uh, cannibal inbreds that uh, they have to you know take on. Um, yeah, like I say, it's kind of a goofy movie, um, and it in a way it kind of feels like it knows it's goofy. Um, and it's pretty fun. It's nothing groundbreaking, um, but it is quite entertaining. I mean, I'm guessing most people watching this have seen Wrong Turn, so we'll move on from that. Uh, next up, Wrong Turn 2, Dead End. I only got this recently, haven't watched it yet. Um, I figured I'd give it a go. It was cheap. Um, and like I said, I, don't, I think the, the original Wrong Turn was, was kind of enjoyable for what it was. Um, so uh, I do want to see what they did with the sequel. Um, but yeah... That's wrong turn two. Next up, this is one of the first DVDs I ever bought. X-Men 1.5. Uh, so this is a re-release of X-Men. Um, and it is like the super um, kind of, you know, special edition-y version. And, uh, yeah, it contains a lot of stuff kind of related to X-Men 2, which we'll get on to. Um, but yeah, no, th this is oh, cool. One of them little booklets. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of the first DVDs I, I, I ever got um, as a kid. Uh, I love the original X Men. I think it's a it's a really, really, really good film. Um, I definitely think it's. I mean, I haven't seen all of them because I kind of I'm not really interested in comic book movies particularly. But this is. Um, Probably my favourite of the kind of Marvel movies. Not necessarily just the Marvel Studios ones, but, um, you know, in general, Marvel superhero movies. I, I definitely think that's a great movie. Um, and the sequel, X-Men 2. This one I found a little bit disappointing. I mean, I was really excited that Nightcrawler was going to be in it. Um, and then the character was kind of shit in the movie. Um, you know... Uh, Obviously, I've been watching the TV program and stuff. There'd been uh, some X-Men cartoons on TV. And um, I was a big fan of Nightcrawler because he was kind of quirky. He was a bit like Spider-Man. He was a bit of a wisecracker and all of that sort of thing. So I liked him for that. Plus, his, you know, his abilities and stuff were really cool. Um, and then, obviously, he was going to be in this movie. Check this movie out. And they just didn't do the character right. He was just kind of a sap in this movie um but yeah that's whatever i guess um yeah that's x-men 2 or x2 it's uh sometimes known as um yeah not a ridiculously bad movie but um it certainly disappointed me a little bit following on from what i thought was a great movie in the in the form of the first one Next up, Extro. Um, this is a British sci-fi horror movie. Um, yeah, this is a pretty rad little movie, actually. Really good fun. About a guy who goes missing. Um, uh, he's abducted by aliens. And uh, he returns into his son's life. Um, and uh, there's something very weird about him. And it turns out that he's kind of become one of the aliens, if it were, as it were. Um... And I mean, yeah, this is, this is a pretty crazy little movie, you know, with the kind of aliens and all of that sort of thing. Um, it's definitely got, a, you know, a lot of influence from Alien. Obviously, it's a significantly lower budget movie. Um, but yeah, no, Extra is a lot of fun. Uh, I would highly recommend this one, in fact. Um, if you're into kind of quirky uh, sci-fi stuff. Um, but yeah, that's extra. Uh, we won't stick with it too long. Next up, all right. This is, I think, this is, yeah, this is the only TV series uh, in this part. The young ones, um, yeah, it's just superb. Um, this sitcom, uh, obviously, a like kind of flat share sitcom about four students and their um, unusual landlord um, in North London somewhere. Um, it's, like I say, it's just um, a really zany sitcom and was kind of groundbreaking at the time. 
Um, it brought a lot of kind of surreal humour to British comedy and uh, kind of was one of the big kickstarters for the alternative comedy scene or, or at least kind of bringing national attention to it outside of just comedy clubs and stuff. Um, obviously there was also at the same time the Comic Strip Presents was on um, which had a lot of the same cast um, and was also kind of instrumental in that boom. Um, but yeah, I mean, The Young Ones is fantastic, great series, um, very funny, very original. Um, like I say, at the time, uh, it was obviously considered very groundbreaking, it was a real trailblazing uh, program. So that's The Young Ones, anyway. Moving on, uh, and we've got um, a whole lot of movies, we begin with, the, with uh, the same word here. This is Zombie Holocaust. Um, this is basically, um, you might know it as Dr. Butcher MD, Medical Deviant. Um, this movie um, kind of combines a bunch of different things. It tries to be a lot of things at once. It tries to be a zombie movie, a cannibal movie, and a slasher movie all at once. Um, uh, basically, what there is, is there's a mad scientist kind of creating zombies on this um, island in the South Pacific, I guess. Um, and he's kind of using the cannibals to guard his um, laboratory, if you will. Um, so, I mean, you know, it combines all of those elements. Doesn't pull all of them off particularly well. Um, but it's a fun movie in, in its own right. It's, um, you know, there's some pretty uh, nasty gore and stuff. Um, so if that sounds like your cup of tea, if you're a cat, it's definitely kind of more of a cannibal movie, I'd say, than a zombie movie on the whole. Um, in terms of its style, so if you're if you're into cannibal movies, check that out. I mean, I'm not really a cannibal movie person on the whole. Um, there's only like five that are any good. Uh, pardon me. So I mean, that's that's a cool enough movie. It's all right. Next up, Zombie Flesh Eaters, one of my favourite zombie movies of all time. Um, the Lucio Fulci uh, classic. Um, in fact, I'd say there's only three or four that I prefer over this. Um, yeah, like I say, one of my favourite zombie movies. This came with a poster as well. This is an Arrow video set. It's brilliant. Um, got a booklet. Um, just a, a few details on the movie. Kind of the history of the movie and stuff. Um, and some uh, interviews with um, the uh, cast. Yeah, like I say, this is a really cool set that Arrow did. Um, Zombie Flesh Eaters, incidentally, is a fantastic movie, as I say. Um, this, is, this is a reversible cover as well. I won't bother showing you the other side. Um, but, but yeah, no, this is um, basically uh, an, uh, a group of American... Well, two American tourists and two people who are investigating um, a, some mysterious goings-on in the harbour in New York head to this uh, island where voodoo is practiced and discover that the island is becoming overrun with some sort of zombie curse um, and they have to um, yeah get down and try and shoot their way out great movie as I say um, one of my favorite zombie movies uh, you might know it as zombie or zombie 2 uh, depending on where you're from um, but yeah no awesome movie superb Next up, the sequel, Zombie Flesh Eaters 2. You might know this is Zombie Free. Um, this is uh, basically, kind of plot-wise, a rip-off of Return of the Living Dead. Um, the um, infection is spread through uh, kind of ash in the uh, being released into the atmosphere. Um, like I say, tonally, it's not got an awful lot in common with Zombie Flesh Eaters, uh, with um, Return of the Living Dead. Um, it's kind of um, a lot more, it's played a lot more straight um, than Return of the Living Dead was and it's um, just not very good to be honest. Um, it's kind of goofy so if you're in it for a bit of goofiness then you should def definitely um, check it out. Um, like I say it's a pretty crap movie really. Um, but I mean there is there are some decent special effects here and there so that's that one. And Zombie Flesh Eaters 3, I've never gotten all the way through this movie, it's fucking terrible. Um, it almost seems like there's um, a problem with this DVD, that like it's like the, the frame rate is really low 
or something. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm trying to watch it on a you know a Blu-ray player, and it's kind of the HD upscaling is um, you know interfering. But uh, yeah, Zombie Flesh Eaters Three. This is um, actually a movie called After Death that was retitled as Zombie Four um, After Death, and then that became Zombie Flesh Eaters Three. Um, yeah, but this is proper fucking shit. This movie. Um, like I said, I've never gotten even halfway through it, I think, um, because it's, you know, yeah, very crap. But yeah, that's that's Zombie Flesh Eats for I won't go on too much about it, just know that I think it's terrible. Next up, Zombie Strippers, uh, obviously, with um, porn star Jenna Jameson and um, Robert England. I found this movie surprisingly entertaining, I'll be honest with you. It's kind of got some comedy elements, but... On the whole, I really like the kind of, um, you know, the whole idea related to the army um, testing on um, the X chromosome um, as the stable chromosome. And in this, um, the kind of women who become zombies um, develop more, uh, kind of, they become far stronger and more intelligent and um, generally are just kind of, you know, given basically superpowers by becoming zombies. Um, whereas men become kind of the more conventional zombies. Um, but actually, I, I, I like this movie. Um, I know a lot of people have kind of slagged it off, um, seemingly purely on the basis of the premise. Um, but, yeah, it's a fun movie, um, quite entertaining. I like it. Next up, Zombieland uh, with uh, Jesse Eisenberg, Woody Harrelson... Emma Stone, Abigail Breslin. This is a cool movie, man. This was on the uh, lists as well. Yeah, go and check out the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, Zombieland's really cool. Um, if you want to know more of my thoughts on it, go and check out the podcast, as I say. Um, yeah, just a really cool horror comedy. I like it a lot. Very action-packed. Cool stuff. Next up, and this is the final DVD that I've got to show you on my um, DVD collection. Zombies of War. It's also one of the worst films I own. Um, this, yeah, this is fucking abysmal um, Nazi zombie movie. It's not even really a zombie movie. The original title of the movie is Horrors of War, um, because it deals more. It doesn't actually deal with zombies. It kind of deals with kind of super soldiers that have um, gone wrong. Um, but yeah, no, this is a pathetic movie, really. Um, so poor. Um, but the one thing that was really funny about it is, um, obviously, because it's retitled, they've had to cut a new title in. And if you watch the um, kind of end credits, just before the end credits, right, they, they show the title of the movie on the screen. And there's just a tiny little split second where you can see where it says Horrors of War, and they've cut that out and put Zombies of War. It's kind of like, if you remember in the movie Death Proof, the Quentin Tarantino film, um... If you watch the opening sequence of that movie, just for a split second before the word Death Proof comes up as the title, it says Quentin Tarantino's Thunderbolt, the joke being that that's the original title and it was changed. Um, it's, it's similar to that, only for real rather than as a joke this time. Um, but yeah, no, that's an abysmal movie, shockingly bad. Um, but yeah, that wraps it up. Um, for the A to Z of my uh, horror DVD, well, not my horror DVD, but my DVD collection, that is mostly horror. Um, it's been fun. And uh, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm nowhere near done yet, really. Still got sort of at least three videos to do before I've shown you everything. But overall, uh, yeah, um, it feels weird to have finished it um, in part. But yeah, um, hopefully you've enjoyed it and uh, you'll check back for more DVDs soon. And more reviews, obviously. See you soon, ladies and gentlemen.